But we're delighted with Elder Elderov. He seems in great condition. He's had a very smooth, smooth training schedule, you know, over the last six weeks or so. Uh, really, since he ran in Paris, um, touch wood, everything's gone well, and you know his work's been good. Uh, he looks incredibly well in his coat and condition. You've got one more strong workout this week ahead of a ledger. Hopefully, that goes goes as well as we hope, and we're looking forward to running him. His big workouts are behind him. Uh, as you saw this morning, he looks very, very well in his skin, uh, tight in his condition. I think mentally he's in a good place, and um, you know what will be will be. But uh, we're pleased with his condition. He only had the one start as a two-year-old, and he he was just a, a bit slow to come to hand this spring. He'd won so well at Nottingham in October, we'd hoped to have got him to a derby trial, and that just didn't happen. He was just uh, slow coming out of a winter. It took a while to thrive, and then uh, obviously he ran in a novice race at Newcastle towards the end of May, and he won under a penalty, and then he went on to Ascot and won the Queen's Vars. Eldar Eldarov is trying to catch him, so also is Harfit. These two bearing down on Zechariah and Colin Keane. Eldar Eldarov, the judge will have to split them. Um, Queen's Vars was a tough race, uh, from there he, he dropped him back to a mile and a half, he went to Paris, I don't think he disgraced himself, he ran fourth, uh, but that was a tough trip, it was during a really hot week, I think uh, 36 degrees was temperature recorded when they were racing in Paris and you know to, to travel out there and travel back in extreme temperatures, have quite a tough race, you know we felt um, he didn't need to race back uh, at Goodwood. I felt uh, maybe going to York would come a bit close to the ledger. I, I was happy that we could train him into the ledger off uh, a reasonable gap and, and think he's quite a good horse fresh. Um, he's a real staying horse. You know, he, he, he'd won over the mile and six at Ascot, looked like he needed every yard of it. The, the mile and a half um, at Longchamp, you know, the ground was very quick. It was a speed test over the trip. And to me, he was only just getting going as they were crossing the line. I don't think he disgraced himself. I think he ran fine. He just he just showed us that he's he's not that type of horse. Kingston Hill and Snow Sky thrusting late. I just remember relief that day really. You know, we look back on it with joy, but on the day it was a relief. He was a strong favourite. I'm not sure there was pressure as such, but there was uh, internal pressure, you know, that he win that race and you know you don't go into classic races too often with uh, a favourite's chance and I was delighted to be able to see Kingston Hill win, you know, for connections, you know, Paul Smith and his family, and um, but for us as well to, to notch a classic victory fairly early on in, in a training career is it's just nice on the CV. So it was a great day, you know, looking back on it, it was it was uh, very special, and uh, he was a special horse. But Kingston Hill was a you know great big solid imposing horse who had picked up his Group One as a two-year-old and ran second in the Derby. Fourth in an eclipse, you know, he'd really brought Group One form into the race, and I suppose went off deserving favourite. Elder Elderov is a—he's a, a, been a bit more um, unfurnished through the early part of his career, I would say, and he's just starting to flourish now. Of course, Kingston Hill didn't race beyond three, but I would hope Elder Elderov will be better as a four-year-old and maybe even better as a five-year-old. I just hope that he's a type of horse who's really only just uh, starting out on his career. Um, I think he's fully deserving of his place in the St. Ledger lineup. I think the, the, the Queen's Vars at Royal Ascot has been a very true St. Ledger trial over the last eight or nine or 10 years. And um, I think on that day, he demonstrated, you know, a lot of uh, battling qualities and, you know, strength and stamina. And, you know, those qualities should, should play to his strengths on Saturday. You know, Believe in Love uh, is in great form. She's uh, admirably, a consistent filly. I think she's a, a three-time Group Three winner now, and she's been Group Two placed and Group One placed. Um, she goes into the race in good form, and uh, we would really see it as a stepping stone um, towards a, a crack at the Royal Lou, a race that she was only just beaten uh, ahead in last year. She was second, second in that race last year. So she goes to the Park Hill in good form, and she ought to run a very good race. Ishard is in great form. Um, she's been lightly raced this year, but she looks like she's really starting, starting to blossom now. Uh, she's very much an autumn filly. She came good this time of year last year and as a two-year-old as well. So I think she's just peaking at the right time. I think she'll go into the race lightly as top rated. And I've been delighted with how she's trained recently and I think she'll go there with every chance. Celsabila, yeah, she could uh, take her place in the May Hill. 
She's a lovely filly. She's only ran twice. She lacks a little bit of experience, but she's improving quickly, I think. She would have to find another level um, to her form in the May Hill, but I think a mile at a track like Doncaster would suit her very well. Kazoo St. Ledger Festival, 7th to 10th of September at Doncaster Racecourse.